Voicebox is a Tiki Toby fanfiction consisting of 12 chapters and was first published on Quotev on the 29th of March 2014. Obviously, all signs point towards it being a magnum opus, so therefore I thought I would read the story together with you all so we can dull the pain together. Each week, every Tuesday, I'll upload a new chapter. Let's call it Tiki Tuesdays. Now, it begins. Voice Box, a Tiki Toby love story. Chapter 9. Alright, let's get this shit over with. The next month passed quickly for me. Bella started going out on kills with Uncle Offender and has started a lovely garden of arms in the backyard next to Uncle Offender's roses. Uncle Splendor had given me a late birthday present. A beautiful black horse with blood red mane. Ding! There, that's blood. Tail and flaming hooves that I named Dark Flame. He gave Benna a pet cute little dark grey bunny with sharp dagger like teeth and blood <laughs> dripping from her cute fuzzy ears. Oh, it's so cute, you know, killing people. So cute. The bunny had a black bow with blood red poke. Oh my god, how much blood! Blood red polka dots tied around her neck. She named the bunny Midnight Mist, you fucking special snowflake cunts! Uncle Offender had also given Benna a present, though I had to wonder how he managed to get the cat man to agree to be a pet. Tsume looks about 18 years old, that's our Tsume. He is 6'5 tall, with cute black cat ears on his head. Black hair and tail, blood red cat eyes and light tan skin. He usually wears a three-quarter sleeve black silk shirt with a blood red sleeveless velvet tunic-like shirt over it. <gasps> a black collar with a gold cat bell, a black leather pants, a and black leather pants and boots. Sume was really shy at first, but he warmed up quickly once Benna stopped trying to pet his ears and pull his tail. Toby didn't really like him, but he never told me why he didn't care for Tsume. Tsume was al always really nice to me. He played with Benna and Sally, ugh, and he helped around the house. He is also really cute in his cat form, though he only sleeps in that form. Maskey and Eyeless Jack had been sticking to Phoenix like glue anytime she left the house. She had taken to killing pedophiles with a sword! <laughs> she liked to cut off their genitals and then kill them by thrusting her sword up their asses <laughs> so far that it ruptured their stomachs and their stomach acid would start digesting their internal organs. <laughs> The day before Phoenix's 18th birthday, Maskey, Eyeless Jack, and Toby took Benna, Phoenix, and I sh out shopping for new dresses for the party. I talked Benna into getting a... What the fuck? What in the actual f Are you fucking kidding me? The, the, the author actually put in links to, like, shopping websites where you can see what they, that they are buying for her. Oh my god! They're actually, like, linking to, to, to fucking pages with, with clothes. Oh my god, no. No. <laughs> I talked Phoenix into getting this little off-the-shoulder lacy black dress for the party. A gold bead bracelet and black-heeled sandals. Benna chose this. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> like, I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna leave a link, go to chapter 9 and check this shit out, they actually have the fucking links in the story! A green ball ballerina style dress with a green rose attached to the waist, a green white rose hair clip and silver sandals. I picked this. Oh, are you fucking for real? How old are you? Why are you wearing that? A uh, short purple party dress with a long black see-through lacy sleeves and back and thigh-high black heeled boots. It is really hard to tell what the boys thought of our dresses due to their masks, but Toby gave a wolf whistle when he saw me in my dress. After dress shopping, the guys treated us to lunch at the- AT THE CREEPY PASTA CAFE! 
<laughs> it was such a fun day, though there was this one guy over in the corner of the cafe that made me nervous. Oh, is we are we finally gonna get some conflict? I couldn't tell much about how he looked since he was sitting in the, in the darkest corner, but I could see he had one bright crimson eye and one glowing golden eye and it looked like he had horns on his head. I don't know why, but when I mentioned the person to Phoenix, she said that she felt the same. We were all tired when we got home that night and turned in early. The next morning I woke up to hear Phoenix's silent screams of pain ringing in my head. I felt terrible for her, I know how bad it hurt when my tendrils grew, but I could feel father there comforting her and I knew she didn't need me right then. So I went uh, and got Ben out ready for breakfast. After about an hour, Phoenix had calmed down and I couldn't hear her in my head anymore. Everyone else was sitting at the table eating and talking. Toby kissed my cheek as I sat down next to him and Benna sat across from me next to Uncle Offender. Sissy! Benna looked over at me with a frown. Why isn't Phoenix and Uncle Slendy here? They are always down here by now. Don't worry, Bunny. They will be down shortly. Remember when I got my tendrils? Well, Phoenix is getting hers today and it takes some time. Father is helping Phoenix with that right now. Do you think her tendrils will be like yours, sissy? I'm not sure, Bunny. Uh, who, who is talking? Oh, is it Uncle Offender? Most likely they won't be. Most of our kind has black, gray, or white tendrils that help us blend in with our surroundings. Uncle Offender looked over at me. Voicebox's tendrils are unique among our kind because, of course, Voicebox is a special fucking snowflake, isn't she? And I have noticed that they go in invisible when she hunts. Oh, that's convenient. Really? I didn't know they turned invisible. I looked over at Toby and saw him nodding his head. I was a little disappointed that he didn't tell me since he usually went out killing together. <laughs> I've noticed that too. I thought you already knew or I would have told you. He kissed my cheek and went back to eating. I thought that Toby seemed a little distant that day. Usually, he would talk with me while we ate, but that day he was unnaturally quiet. A short time later, Father and Phoenix came into the dining room and all conversation stopped. I shook off my thoughts and looked up at my sister. My jaw dropped as I took in all the changes. Phoenix still had fox ears and a tail, but they were now a teal blue. Her hair was also teal, and her eyes had turned a lavender color. Four lavender tendrils with swirls of teal and black were wrapped around her waist as though hugging her. Oh, this is kinky. She blushed, uh, blushed as everyone started and started... Everyone stared and started twisting her hair around her finger while her tail twitched. Damn! Phoenix looks hot with green hair! Jeff eyed her up and down and licked his lips. Jeffrey, if you do not quit thinking about my daughter's- No, wait, that's Slenderman. I, it's so fucking hard to know who's talking. Jeffrey, if you do not quit thinking about my daughters in that manner, I will be forced to remove the part of your body that is doing the thinking for you. Why not just kill him? What does Jeff contribute to this fucking happy society? What? How does he contribute? Why could you fucking kill him? Father's voice was stern, and I could tell that Jeff was getting on his last nerve. Like, for, I'm serious here. If, if fucking, if, if the climax of this fucking story, if the ending is that every single character, like, goes, works together to kill Jeff, then the entire story would be redeemed. The entire story would be, like, 10 out of 10, I swear. <coughs> Sorry. Jeff, those are my nieces you are thinking of, and if I ever caught you thinking of my daughter like that, I will turn you into a girl. Everyone stared at Uncle Offender in shock, though I knew that Uncle Offender had only changed his attitude about the women in his family. I saw the way he would glance down at Benna and knew he must have been thinking about how uh, he would feel if it was his daughter Jeff was lusting after. Laughing Jack started laughing when Jeff started stuttering, and everyone went back to eating and talking. Phoenix and Father sat down and started eating. 
As soon as breakfast was over, Benna and Phoenix and I headed upstairs to get ready for the party. We all talked and laughed as we got ready. Benna her green eye patch with the white bow. I helped her with her hair clip and then Benna and I did Phoenix's hair. I thought of asking Phoenix what she thought about the way Toby was acting during breakfast, but decided against it. I didn't want her to worry on her birthday. After, the party was in full swing. I was sure that something was wrong with Toby. He had only danced with me twice, and spent most of his time talking with the other creepypastas instead of me. Ooh, are we getting a triangle drama? I swear, I fucking... Cause, cause Toby and voice, no wait, Toby and uh, Clockwork are supposed to be like ship, shipped together, usually, right? I wonder if it has something to do with Clockwork. Hmm. Uh, I decided to ask Toby point blank what was going on. So after I finished dancing with Banna and Sally, I went searching for Toby. Oh! Woo! It took me an hour to find him, and when I did, I wished I hadn't. I found Toby leaning against the wall in the hallway, kissing Clockwork. Clockwork, you fucking slut. You're supposed to love me! I thought we had something, Clockwork, you and I. What the fuck? You fucking cheated on me, you, you whore. You fucking slut, you were supposed to love me. You were supposed to love me. Now bleed, bitch, bleed! <laughs> uh, I'm getting way too much into this. She had her... <laughs> oh my god! She had her hand in his pants and he was holding her shoulders. I must have made a sound because Toby looked over at me and pushed clockwork away. Voice box, it's n not... He started as clockwork gave me a smug little smile. You fucking whore. You were supposed to love me. Uh, all the fan art. You remember all the fan art that people drew? Hoodah Hoodlum X Clockwork? Did that mean nothing to you? Uh, I was so angry and hurt that all I did was slap Toby across the face and ran off with tears streaming down my face. I heard Toby calling my name, but I didn't stop running. I was shattered, shattered memories. I had trusted Toby and he cheated on me. I don't know how long I ran, but it was well after dark when I stopped in a small clearing and collapsed in tears next to a small pond. Toby had said he would never hurt me and he lied. Wow, I was not expecting that actually. I was expecting Toby to be like this really nice, you know, guy. This really faithful guy. This is actually kind of interesting. I'm liking this. I, I like this. This is triangle drama. I was hurt. I was so hurt and angry that I didn't even hear when Phoenix arrived. One minute I was sobbing into my hands and the next Phoenix had me wrapped in her arms. She stroked my hair as I cried on her shoulder. We didn't talk, we just sat there until I started calming down. Shayla, let's we go on a killing spree. Yes, killing makes everything better. Phoenix wiped the tears from my cheeks as I finally stopped crying and gave me a sad smile. You can pretend that every victim is either Clockwork or Toby. That will help relieve your anger. What do you say, little sister? Or 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 do you just kill Clockwork and Toby because that hasn't stopped you before? I nodded and we headed out. We didn't even head back home for our weapons. We went straight to the human realm and transported to the nearest city to hunt. We were in luck and quickly found a gang in the city park that was raping three- Are you fucking kidding me? Like, I'm not even kidding. This story is like seriously fucking sexist towards men. Every single man is either a cheater, they're a sex-obsessed freak, or they're like fucking a father figure like Slenderman, or they're raping people on the fucking street! Oh, we went outside and we're in luck because we found some dudes raping three girls, I don't know. What the fuck is this? The girlfriends of the gang members laughed as the terrified begged the men to let them go or the girlfriends to help them. I was disgusted that those girls would watch as their boyfriends raped people in front of them. This is just... no, this is, this is not good. I nodded to Phoenix and went to work. We both grabbed the gang members and their girlfriends with our tendrils and pulled them deeper into the woods away from the three frightened girls. Run home, girls. 
run and forget everything that happened tonight. Oh, it's so easy to forget sexual assault. It's so easy to forget, you know, being brutally raped. You know, go it's it's you just gotta walk away. You just gotta move on. It's it's that easy. I called out to them from the shadows. Go now, dear ones. Speak of this to no one. They would not believe you anyway. Phoenix coked them when they stood frozen for a minute. We knew they couldn't see us in the shadows, but they could hear the now frightened gang whimpering in fear as our tendrils held them so firmly they couldn't even move. Thank you, one of the girls said as she grabbed the other two and forced them to start running with her. Phoenix and I transported back to the creepypasta realm with our victims. Phoenix slowly tortured three of the girls and one of the boys, ripping the boy's deck off and using it to... <laughs> To rape the three girls who had laughed at those three girls' pains. Yes, because raping the rapists, you know, that's that's totally fucking the way to go about it. I listened to their blood-curdling screams as I giggled evilly and used my tendrils to tear the last girl apart in front of the other three boys. After I ate her vocal cords, I looked over at the three boys and smiled. So you think rape it fun? The girl's voice said as I spoke. Let's just see how much fun you think it is now. I then ripped the clothes off them and started shoving tree branches up their asses. You know, this is a little fun. Are you boys having fun yet? I giggled as the three boys screamed and begged me to stop. After a half hour of torturing the boys with various sizes of tree branches and watching them bleed and scream, I impaled them each on a tree branch so hard that it went right through their bodies. I laughed at the gruesome decorations. Hey sissy, think we're related to Vlad the Impaler? You are not as cool as Vlad the Impaler- No, I'm kidding. Anything is possible, little sis. Phoenix laughed and we both sat down under my decorated tree. We just sat there for a while. I was emotionally and physically exhausted and laid my head on Phoenix's lap. She ran her fingers through my hair and I slowly drifted to sleep. The next thing I knew, I fell violently to the ground. I saw Phoenix struggling in the grasp of a dark shadowy figure. Before I could uh, get up to help her, I was hit from behind and felt myself lost consciousness and fall into darkness. When I woke up again, I was in a dark, blood-stained dungeon. Chains, chains rattled as I tried to move and I could see that I was chained to the wall by my wrists and ankles. I looked around and saw that Phoenix was chained to the wall across from me. She had a large bruise on her face and a bleeding cut on her forehead. I tried to transport, but when I did I felt a sharp piercing pain in my head. I tried to use my tendrils to pick the logs, but the logs burned my tendrils when I touched them. I tried to call out to Phoenix with my telepathy, but I was met with more pain. Phoenix? Phoenix? Are you okay? I called out. She didn't answer and her eyes were still closed. I would have panicked if uh, I hadn't been able to see her breathing. Phoenix! Wake up! Voice box? Phoenix jolted awake and quickly looked around. Little sister, are you alright? I'm okay, but where are we? What happened? I don't know. I was grabbed from behind and tried to struggle, but I was knocked out. Her chains rattled as she tried without success to break free. Just then the door opened and a man walked in. I knew he was a creepypasta. The horns and crimson and golden eyes gave that away, oh no. But I didn't think I had ever seen him at our mansion before. His skin was grayish silver, his grin showed off his sharp white teeth, and shoulder-length hair was a dark bluish gray. Well, well, well. I see the little princesses have woken up. His voice was smooth and seductive, but cold. Who are you, and what do you want with us? I struggled against my chains. Oh, how rude of me. I didn't introduce myself. My name is Zalgo. I am the one who will sing the song that will end the world. He chuckled darkly as he sauntered over to Phoenix and caressed her cheek. He then came over to me and leaned close as if he was going to tell me a secret, though he didn't lower his voice. 
As for why you are here, I have chosen the two of you to be my wives. We will be married in two weeks. What? This is not f this is not fucking Zolgo. This is not how he's characterized. Don't ruin one of the coolest creepypasta characters. No way would we marry you. I growled and tried to bite him because that's gonna help you. I wanted to rip his throat out. He gave a sinister laugh as he strolled back over to Phoenix and punched her in the stomach. I heard he gasped in pain and I yelled for her. My dear little princess. I can be kind and gentle, or I can be cruel. You will both marry me at the end of two weeks, and if one of you misbehaves, the other will receive the punishment. The more you misbehave, the worse your sister's punishment will be. Is this a commentary against polygamy, pol pol polygamous relationships? <laughs> he then stroked Phoenix's cheek almost lovingly before heading back to the dungeon door. I can bring you either great pleasure or horrible pain. The choice is yours. He exited the room and the thick iron door banged closed and the lights grew too dim to see properly. Because that's gonna, you know, totally convince them to be your loving wives. I was left chained to the wall, listening to my sister sobbing and praying that father would find us. I didn't know lo how long I sat there in the dark before I started drifting to sleep but I felt a few more tears drip down my cheeks. Toby, I whispered as I fell asleep once more. Well, that was chapter 9, and it's finally starting to pick up after 9 fucking chapters I dropped my TV remote. Anyways, that was probably like the, the, the most offensive chapter yet because, oh, that was fucking terrible. I, I like that we finally got to see uh, Toby's true colors and we got we got some uh, we got some action with clockwork as well but still I'm, I'm not over the fact that she cheated on me that fucking slut <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyways thanks for listening tune in next time for chapter 10 uh, 